First things first is you need patience with a device like this. It's not plug and play. Now with that out of the way, let's discuss my real time experience with the Legion Go and why I was wrong about it. Now, I am currently comparing the Legion Go to the Asus Rogue Ally in real time. So if you haven't seen video part one to that video series, I highly suggest you do it after watching this video and subscribe if you're not already. Now, the screen got me, you guys. <laughs> the screen size, the screen clarity, the screen speed is almost the perfect panel, except there's no VRR and the choice to go portrait, I mean, hopefully in the future renditions of this, we'll see OLED. But aside from all of that, the more I play it, the more I appreciate this screen size and quality by far, especially in comparison to the competition. This 8.8 .8 inch panel versus a seven inch is a nice difference. And I'm here for it. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I, the more I play it, the more I get immersed in gaming on this thing, the more I love it and the more I appreciate it. It's just refreshing to be able to see more without having to squint or move the panel closer to my face. And that goes a long way for everyday, you know, long form gaming. We're gonna talk about long time gaming on these devices, especially in the area of battery coming up soon. Stay tuned. The next thing that reeled me in about the Legion Go was when I tested it with mouse and keyboard gameplay. One of the biggest advantages the Legion has is this built-in kickstand, the fact that you can remove these controllers and just typically have a 8.8 .8 inch PC display with a built-in PC into it, especially for mobile traveling gaming. If you wanna hook up a mouse and keyboard via a dock, which I was able to do with my CalDigit TS3 Plus, which was super clutch. I didn't expect it to work as it didn't work on the other one. <laughs> and I appreciated that. Now there's something with the wattage that I have to discuss and I'll talk about that in a second, but I had full on mouse and keyboard support and gaming that way on the Legion Go just felt right. And then there's the FPS mode, which is activated by the flip of this switch and the addition of this accessory here. Let me just say this. I wrote that, you know, ability and that feature completely off before ever testing it or having time spent using it. And boy, was I wrong about that by a long shot. Now, I don't think it's gonna be for everyone. It is different. It's kind of awkward in the beginning to get used to, but once I got like the buttons programmed to what I needed it and what was ideal for my grip and kind of got the feel for it, I enjoyed it like thoroughly. Like it made playing first person shooter gaming fun in a different way. It just gave another aspect of the idea of using that. It was almost like I'm, aiming with my wrist and then I'm squeezing the, you know what, trigger. And I don't know, it just was a cool experience. And I was, you know, not a fan of all of the extra buttons which have been put here to accommodate FPS. But now that I've played with the FPS mode, I'm not mad at it at all. Again, I was getting those ghost touches, but the more time that I spent playing with the Legion Go, I've learned how to hold it and how to use it without accidentally hitting this button. I kind of like have lifted my finger. The more traditional grip would be like this, but now I'm more like this. And that was my thing with the Legion Go. I even said it in my first impressions, you know, comparison video was I needed to find my grip, like the way to hold it. And that's with all of these gaming PCs. You have to find your comfort space of how you're gonna be able to hold it and game comfortably, reach all of the buttons and just get that muscle memory. And once I got all of that to fall into play, the Legion Go just grew tremendously on me. And that's why I'm saying I was wrong because I was kind of like in those beginning woes in some of my statements and first impressions, but those were all real authentic first impressions. And that's why I put part one, because this is a series. This is me using it in real time and sharing with you guys my real world progression with these devices. That's why you gotta subscribe and watch every video. You know what I mean? Turn on the bell so you don't miss them. This series is gonna be fun because this is a fun tech segment in gaming. 
and I'm a thorough fan the more and more I use these things. Now again, with FPS mode, it's gonna take some time and some adjustment for those who choose to actually, you know, challenge themselves to get familiar with it. But I think once you dial it in and you, you know, you get comfortable with the FPS mode, it's just a new way to play FPS and it was fun. <laughs> kind of reminded me of them days, you know, back in the day, some of y'all, y'all don't know, but uh, like the first Doom was, um, a lot of people were playing joystick on PC. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little, little, little young, you know what I mean? Typing in dots. I mean, my history with computers goes way back to when I was very small and very young. And uh, yeah. Now, remember earlier I said you needed patience with a device like this? Let me explain. <laughs> because there are some hurdles in the beginning. The setup process is a bit of a process and requires some search and discovery. Oh, and a lot of driver updates. <laughs> but once you get all of that stuff dialed in, just like even with a natural, you know, traditional size PC, you know what I mean? It's just maintenance from there in that point. But there is some fine tuning that comes with these gaming handhelds that you don't get with other traditional handhelds, which is what makes the shine with the full Windows 11 ensuite. But again, there's some great Reddit groups out there and I highly suggest you go join them. There's one for the Legion Go, it's very active and you can get a lot of your questions answered and you can get some support. You can just find them in the previous threads and guide yourself. That's why I said you need patience to search and discover what you need. There's a lot of videos on YouTube as well. I may make one and add to you know the inventory, but there's a lot of ways that you can find your way along the way and get to that plug and play area. Now, what's great also is there are plug and play profiles for those of you who don't wanna get too technical. There's like a performance mode in here. There's a power saving mode. And then you have your custom modes where you're able to customize how you want this to work. For me, my custom mode go-to is the custom 30 watt TDP with the OS power at efficiency. Now, every now and then you can turn on full fan speed. Some people were asking me, what does fan speed sound like on this thing when gaming? Now, I'm gonna turn on full fan speed and typical fan speed is about half that sound. So here's full. You can hear this thing cooking and keeping it cool. And then typically normal gameplay is about half to possibly like a quarter of that, depending on what type of gaming you're doing. I'm doing more like heavy GPU, heavy, you know, system intensive gaming with my FPS of choice, which is Call of Duty. Now I did play some other games like I told you guys I would when I did the first impressions and we'll talk about that in a second. Now the beauty about a gaming PC is you can adjust and fine tune the performance. You can get out of them, but that can also be a headache. <laughs> but I found that when I'm playing power intensive gaming, like I told you guys, especially with COD uh, MW3, somebody said MW3 wasn't a good benchmark. You are nuts. But yeah, when using power intensive games, it's best to have this tethered to a power bank or plugged in in a power source to maintain and supply the power necessary for sustained performance and battery. Because on battery, let's talk about it real quick. You can zap this battery extremely quick. You know, GPU usage, you know what I mean? Fan speeds kicking up, you in performance mode. That battery's gonna fly. Now, if you're doing more, you know, casual chill games that don't require as much in those areas, then you can extend the battery beyond that. But for me, with the way that I'm playing and the way that I'm trying to push higher performance, I got the 30 watt TDP going at all times and all that. Uh, I found that me having this tethered to a power bank with a 100 watt output was the best decision. It also felt like I got better uh, game performance, GPU performance, even Wi-Fi. It just seemed like it helped give this device the full power it needed to use all of its internal components because I was gaming out in the living area and I did I tried testing it on battery. This is one of the things I did. I, I was in my bedroom. I did the battery. For some reason, I wasn't getting the best Wi-Fi connection. And then in game, I was having these shader issues in Call of Duty. 
But the second I plugged in to my 100 watt, you know, external power battery, you know, portable source, everything ran just fine, which kind of made me scratch my head a little bit, right? And on the area of power, notice I mentioned 100 watts a lot. I also did the mouse and keyboard setup, which I was using this um, CalDigit TS3, which does have power delivery, but it's only at 87 watts. So I was gaming, mouse and keyboard, full blown performance mode. This thing's going crazy in COD, which is heavy, intensive, and this thing just shut out on me. Which, from my research, you need a dock that's outputting 100 watts, and that could be, you know, the cause of my mishap that I had. So I ordered a hub that's 100 watt that's going to be coming in, and we're going to test that theory. And we're going to see if we have that issue again or not. This is why I say you need patience because sometimes you might run into something and before you write it off, you need to do, you know, the search and discovery and test and just, what do you call it? Problem solve some things. This is rough, raw, and rugged. I'm giving it to you guys. I'm not going to just only show you the good times and put together this beautifully drawn out video with just a bunch of beautiful B-roll and not share the real world, the real use. You know what I mean? That's what this is all about. That's why this is a series it's always going to say part one, part two, part three, because you guys are going to progress along with me. So it's very early in my Legion Go journey. There's still more updates and fine tuning to be had, especially in the area of the dead zones on these joysticks. Now, this is great technology being used for these joysticks. But at this current moment, we don't have the dead zone adjustment, which mid-December, this should be out. So if you're watching this beyond that, Ignore it, you have the dead zone adjustments and you're probably enjoying this Legion Go in its full glory with these beautiful joysticks. Like these are great, they feel amazing. It's just, I needed that fine tuning, which I've done my makeshift fixes inside Call of Duty. I didn't do any of the third party software because I'm not trying to get banned. I have anything reading that way. And as soon as Lenovo releases their update, I will be right back here reporting to you guys. So that way, we can correct that area. But one thing I will say is I spent some hours playing. I've developed my grip. I've gotten somewhat accustomed to where we are right now. And I've you know made some adjustments and I've improved my gameplay in my FPS on this. And the reason why I, I talk about FPS gaming a lot is because that's just my high priority of gaming. And the reason why I bought these is to play that game on the go. Now, I did take my gameplay beyond Call of Duty. I played my Dragon Balls game, a little Sonic, um, a couple of other games that weren't as labor intensive. I've even tried them, you know, without being plugged in, with being plugged in. I did have something funky happen with the display. That's the only thing with this portrait, you know, resolution. Some games, you know, they get a little thrown off. I was also able to correct them and play all of these games in their full, you know, portrait screen resolution <laughs> glory um uh, so this thing performs this thing does what it does the size of this panel that you get at 8.8 .8 inches does come with you know some weight and some heft but it's worth it <laughs> it's worth it to have a display size like this yes it could have been oled yes it could have had vrr to be desired i guess in version two i also will be on the search for a TPU silicon style cover for this so that just I could get a little bit more comfort. It would be nice if Lenovo made one, but if not, you know, the third parties are in the works. I seen one on Amazon floating around. It takes a while to get here. So I'll probably order that and test it out. Just something to add to the grip and the comfort, but I have found a decent space of comfort with the Legion Go. And my first impressions, my use cases as I use it more and more, this Legion Go is growing on me tremendously. And that's why you see all of the enthusiasm around the Lenovo Legion Go and it is rightfully so. It absolutely needs more tweaking, more development, and more updates to completely round it out. And the same went with the Rogue Ally, which is why it just feels more well-rounded at this current date. But the future is bright for the Legion Go. <laughs> it is bright, trust me. And I've seen nothing but proactive support and communication from Lenovo around this product thus far, and that's a great sign. Actually, that's a huge sign. Sometimes these tech companies aren't as transparent or communicative, and that's where the issues lie. So these are essentially 
first gen products. So there's growing pains to be expected. Uh, but even with those small hurdles, the Legion Go easily is becoming my favorite for me. And I'll be back with some more real time updates. But as soon as we get that dead zone fixed, I'll have a video out for you guys instantly after testing it, of course, and you know, putting in those use case hours, which I do. <laughs> as I continue to use it, I'll continue to update you guys. But as far as right now, this Legion is a go. <laughs> Keyboard, mouse, gameplay. I can tell you this, it runs very smooth. Oh. I can just even get my... Does my aim. So we're gonna run the bass feed. Oh my aim <laughs> Oh, them shots. It takes some getting used to, but I think once you start to get it, it's like fire. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. what do you got? 
that, that fire breath. Oh, man. Technology snobs, technology snobs. I done just about had it with all of y'all. Listen, huh, duck. <laughs> new watch, no diamonds, new watch, good timing, yeah. New watch, no diamonds, new watch, good timing, yeah. Need no middleman, I'm the man of man, send it in. I like what I like, me, I know my rights. Sipping in, I like having fun. I do what I want, it's what it is. For my son and son, for my daughters, yes, for my twin. I work through the night.